in the previous class we started our discussion on instrumentation and monitoring of tunnels and we discussed that what is the need of the instrumentation and then uh, we learnt about the various instruments which are used to monitor the deformation of the rock and the extent of the loosened rock zone. So, today we will focus on the instruments which are used to monitor the load or the pressure in the support system. So, to start with uh, the first one that we have is the load cell on steel support. It looks like this as shown in the figure. This is used to monitor hoop load on the steel rib supports. The data is used for the estimation of support pressure on the steel ribs. Basically load cell is a transducer that converts the mechanical force into the electrical units. Load cell sensors they are always bonded along with the elastic material which is known as the strain gauges. So, not only it is important for us to know about the load cell, but also about the strain gauges. When a force is applied on the load cell, it bends or stretches causing the movement of the strain gauge which is associated with it. When the length and the cross section of the strain gauge changes, its electrical resistivity also gets altered thereby changing the output voltage. So, basically philosophy is that we are recording the change in the mechanical load in terms of the electrical output. For measuring the hoop load, load cells may be installed within a steel support in different pattern. The butt plates below and above the load cells, they should be parallel and uh, they should be welded to the steel girder at 90 degrees. To avoid the eccentric loading, the load cell should be placed at the center line between the two butt plates. Now, when we uh, weld the butt plates, it should be ensured that the center of the plate matches with the center of the rib. So, all the four bolts should be tightened equally and slowly and we should make sure that butt plates are parallel after finishing the tightening operation. After setting up the load cell and tightening the bolts, uh, we should uh, start taking the uh, observations. So, this is how the arrangement of the load cell on steel supports look like. Here there are three conditions. The first one is uh, where you have the circular support in three pieces joints at uh, 120 degrees. So, you see that this is 120 degrees all these angles and load cells are provided at the points uh, 1, 2 and 3. So, we need to be careful about provision of the load cell. Similarly, in the second one it is the arch shape support with vertical legs. So, you see that this is the arch shape supports and it has the vertical leg. So, we have the semicircular arch and uh, invert load cells at 1, 2 and 3 locations. In the third figure, you have circular support in 4 pieces which are at 90 degree. So, you see we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 load cells in this particular situation. So, this is how the load cells are installed on the steel supports. Now, many a times it has been seen that uh, the load cells were installed within a steel girder support to monitor the support pressure without backfilling between the outer flange of the steel support and the rock. 
see we need to avoid this type of situation because in this condition what will happen that the steel arches are going to be just ornamental as uh, there is a gap between the rock and the steel support. So, the rock load will not be transferred to these arches. So, we need to be careful and do not let this condition happen there in the field. Backfilling should be done properly. This is the typical load versus time plot on the steel support. So, you see that on the y axis you have load in tonnes and on x axis you have uh, the dates. So, this is uh, related to one of the project and uh, these uh, uh, legends that you see these are at uh, different locations uh, that uh, the load cells were installed and the recording has been taken. Coming to the next one which is load on the rock bolt till now we saw load on the steel sets this is related to rock bolt. So, these are measured by rock bolt load cells to determine the adequacy of the rock bolt design these look little bit different you see how uh, these are different than the previous one that I showed you earlier. Mo these monitors the development of load on the rock bolt with time. This is how the installation of a rock bolt load cell looks like. So, you can see that this is what is the load cell bearing plate is this one and the manometer is here. So, these are installed at the anchor head. So, this is what is the anchor head, head of the anchor and uh, the load cells are installed in this location. The measurement of the loads uh, they are either done by a cell which is filled with oil or cells equipped with strain gauges. These values can either uh, be read out by the manometer or remotely. This is a typical uh, plot between load increment in tonnes and the date. So, this was uh, related to one of the uh, typical powerhouse drainage gallery and the load cell was installed at uh, the distance relative distance of minus 3.15 meter at a particular hole. So, here uh, the negative values they show the reduction in the rock bolt installed load. Uh, this is representative of the internal disturbance and the positive ones are uh, the increase in the rock bolt install load that is convergence at the surface. So, you can see that in this particular case it is all negative you see minus 1, minus 3 and all up to minus 15. So, it is all representation of the internal disturbance. Coming to the next category of the instrument is the pressure cells. So, we had the load cell which provided us the average values of the vertical or horizontal support pressure. Now, sometimes uh, as per the local geology which may be inclined joints, uh, these require information on the support loading along the dip of the joint. So, in such cases uh, one needs to install the contact pressure cells at uh, the steel rib rock interface to measure directional loading on the steel ribs. So, basically pressure cells monitor the development of radial pressure on support from different directions. This is how uh, the mounting of the pressure cell is done or the installation is done. See these locations are of the pressure cells and if you just take a enlarged version of this portion this looks like this. So, you have this uh, as a steel rib this portion is the steel rib it may be I section or any other section. So, you have the pressure cell installed here and then uh, this is what is going to be the uh, value of the pressure that is being exerted. So, 
we have uh, typically this is how the pressure cells they look like these are some of the pictures which are readily available on internet just to give you the idea that how these look like uh, this is how uh, the installation of pressure cells looks like in concrete lining so you see these yellow portions these yellow parts they are uh, these yellow parts on the surface they are the pressure cells for the measurement of radial as well as the tangential stresses you see that these are all connected to the uh, terminal units uh, which is in turn which in turn is connected with the portable vibrating wire readout logger these pressure cells are the type of sensors that convert stress or pressure into the measurable and readable electrical unit there are various types of uh, pressure cells but uh, vibrating wire pressure cells are more reliable and faster than any other types because uh, these uh, vibrating wire pressure cells are capable of taking readings electrically as the frequency output is almost immune to the external noise so they have the added advantage over other types of pressure cells these pressure cells consists of a magnetic high tensile strength stretched wire so one end of this wire is anchored and the other end is fixed to a diaphragm which deflects in the same proportion to the applied uh, pressure any deflection in the diaphragm changes the tension in the wire and hence affecting the resonant frequency of the vibrating wire this resonant frequency with which the wire vibrates is accurately measured by the vibrating wire readout unit and the cable from the pressure sensor is connected to this readout unit or the data logger and is also protected against any possible damage during the construction to provide you the all around reliable data with respect to time how to decide the number of pressure cells at any one location this depends upon the requirement of monitoring now while fixing the base of the pressure cell to the outer flange of the girder how this is done we just saw it in a zoomed version of a figure uh, there uh, should be a packing in the area which is left between the base of the pressure cell and outer flange of the steel ribs what will happen when we do this uh, there is going to be the proper contact of the rib and the a uh, pressure cell and this will enable the perfect reaction without the packing there is going to be the point reaction and the contact pressure cell will not give us the correct result or may it may also get damaged when we fix the uh, pressure cell we should keep that in mind that the gap between the outer flange of the girder and the excavated rock surface it should be filled with concrete because if these are not in contact with each other the load from the rock surface will not be transferred to the girder and uh, the readings that you will get uh, from the pressure cells they will be erroneous so the observation should be recorded only after uh, this concrete is set coming to the next category i mentioned to you that uh, strain gauges are equally important so we have three types of strain gauges one is the strain meters second one is the vibrating wires these are suitable for cured uh, concrete structures for example inner lining and then we have fiber optical sensors so coming to the strain meters these are used to measure the strains in shotcrete or inner lining uh, the shotcrete strain gauges uh, should have a minimum measuring range of 1% in compression and 0.2% in 
tension. Uh, these should be temperature compensated to account for uh, the temperature increase which will take place uh, uh, in the shortcrete uh, during the hydration process. Uh, further, uh, the resolution of the reading instrument should be plus minus 0.01 percent of the full scale and the system accuracy shall be better than plus minus 1 percent of full scale. This is how a uh, strain meter here uh, will look like. So, you have here these are the strain gauges which have been installed and you have the PVC pipe, this is what is the measuring cable. Coming to the next category which is the vibrating wire sensors as has been shown in this particular figure. So, these are used to measure uh, the length changes along a measuring line. Their layout is same as that uh, for the strain meters and the resolution of the reading instrument should be 0.01 percent plus minus of uh, full scale. The system accuracy shall be better than plus minus 1 percent of the full scale as it was there in the uh, strain meter case. Then we have uh, the next category of these uh, strain gauges is optical uh, fiber sensors. Uh, these are used to measure the length changes along a measure line. Required accuracy, it depends upon the application and there are different levels of accuracy. So, accordingly this will be decided. These are temperature sensitive. So, temperature measurements uh, always have to accompany the strain measurement. Uh, strain measurement in concrete, steel or the shortcrete uh, is done with the system accuracy of uh, 1 micrometer per meter. The measurement of the ground movement should be done with the system accuracy better than 0 0.1 millimeter per minute and you can see here that this is the optical fiber and uh, the sensors attached with the uh, support system. Strain gauges uh, coming to the other aspects, uh, in this case the strains are plotted versus uh, time and or construction progress. So, that means uh, these strains uh, are plotted with respect to time during the construction and even beyond that. From pairs of the strain measurement, the sectional forces in the lining they are derived. So, always remember that uh, these strain gauges should be used in pairs. These results are compared to the axial thrust bending moment envelope which is determined for the respective short treat age and uh, which is uh, not the nominal 28 days of concrete strength uh, to obtain the realistic utilization estimates which you get from the strain gauges. Then uh, the back calculated uh, section forces are then interpolated between the respective strain gauge positions uh, in the shortcrete shell. This uh, allow the visualization of uh, their distribution in the lining and the clear interpretation of the data that you obtain from the strain gauges. Now, wherever there is a presence of the water, it is important for us to use the water level gauges and the piezometers. So, these water level gauges, uh, they are used for measuring the water level in a borehole by the use of uh, uh, sounding device. While the piezometers, these are used for the determination of ground water pressure within a borehole. So, you must have uh, studied or heard of these piezometers when you study the course on uh, soil mechanics, especially the chapter on permeability or uh, seepage that how do you determine the pore water pressure. So, it is the same piezometer. This is how a typical uh, schematic layout and principle of standpipe piezometer looks like. 
So, you insert the piezometer and with the pressure the water rises into uh, this particular pipe and then from that height of the rise of the water you can determine the uh, pore water pressure. The results of uh, the piezometer reading these are displayed uh, uh, versus time uh, during and after the construction. Uh, the typical example of the water pressure reduction when a tunnel approaches and passes the piezometer uh, installed from the surface to a depth of 42 meter at uh, this uh, chainage 1146 is uh, just shown here. So, you can see that here there is a sudden drop of the uh, pressure maybe to the tune of uh, say from 3.6 bar to approximately maybe 1.6 bar. So, drastic change of 2 bar of uh, the pressure is taking place. So, in this case the ground was consisting of siltstone and the clay stone and uh, as I mentioned to you that if you notice this particular uh, zone then there is a strong drop of about 2 bar uh, which is approximately from 3.6 bar to 1.6 bar just within a few days as the tunnel was excavated at the level of the piezometer monitoring section. Then in the following weeks uh, with and with further tunnel progress the water pressure stabilizes at approximately you see here this is uh, the one. So, this is approximately 1.2 bar. So, this is how that we can get the idea uh, from the piezometers. The evaluation of water pressure measurements these are helpful in assessing whether the drainage measures ahead of the face are required or not. So, therefore, when we have the piezometers installed uh, in the section, this is how the information can be useful. So, this was all about the various instruments used to measure the load or the pressure on the rock surface or in the support system. So, this is how the typical instrumentation section will look like and in this section we have pressure cells, load cells and then pin for the support deformation along with the, the 4 point borehole extensometer. So, you see that the length of the borehole extensometer is uh, known a priori. Uh, if we take the cross section this is how the uh, instrumentation location and level of excavation typically may look like. So, this figure has been taken from uh, uh, a reference which is given here. So, this is how here it was a shear zone and all other properties I mean I will give you the details of this uh, reference towards the end of this class and then maybe if you are interested you can take a look. But you see how extensive instrumentation has been done. All these are the location of the instrumentation. The question comes now is that uh, how should we select the instruments that which one should be used. So, this is uh, one of the important step towards a perfect uh, instrumentation program. The selection of the instruments uh, is done based on the site condition and the required numbers. Then uh, type, capacity, least count of the instrument should be decided accordingly. This is a very important aspect because uh, sometimes the load if it exceeds the capacity of the load cell or if it is other way round then uh, it does not uh, or then it defeats the purpose of the instrumentation. So, we need to be extremely careful about deciding these parameters along with the selection of instruments. Now, while drafting the specification of instruments, it is advisable therefore, to have the opinion of an expert on the expected rock loads. Coming to various specification of uh, the different instruments. So, the first one is the range of the instrument. 
which should be decided on the basis of uh, predicted behavior of the rock mass. Now, the question comes that how do we predict the behavior of the rock mass? So, whatever we studied till now, that knowledge will come handy to predict the behavior of the rock mass. For example, the classification of the rock mass and then what is going to be the support pressure, what is going to be the closure uh, etc. All those things will help here. For example, uh, the borehole extensometer should have a higher range in the squeezing ground condition and the lower range in the non-squeezing ground condition. But then beforehand we should know where is the squeezing ground condition at the site or if it is non-squeezing ground condition. So, to decide this whatever that we learnt will be helpful. If the range is unnecessarily higher than what is needed, uh, the least count will also increase and uh, the instrument will suffer as far as its precision is concerned. Type of the uh, instrument that depends upon the purpose of the instrumentation and uh, accessibility for observations. For long term monitoring, one should install the electrical instruments uh, having remote reading facility. Otherwise, the use of uh, the mechanical type of instruments, uh, they are recommended because they are more economical and easy to handle as compared to uh, the electrical instruments. Sometimes uh, it has been seen that the instrument uh, required for the short term monitoring is inaccessible and in such a situation it becomes necessary for us to use the electrical instrument with the, the remote reading facility. Cost is very very important. So, when we have the projects of uh, small cost one should use uh, the cheap mechanical instruments. Uh, without uh, sacrificing on their reliability. At the same time, if the instrument location is inaccessible, of course, we, we do not have any choice but to install few number of electrical instruments. So, the question comes that uh, how much one should spend on the instrumentation out of the total cost of the project. So, the thumb rule is uh, that about 5 percent of the cost of the project. Uh, should be invested uh, in the instrumentation and monitoring of the project, which is usually compromised. So, that should not be done because now you are aware that why the instrumentation and monitoring of the underground excavations they are important. Coming to the rock type, so we when we have the good quality rock mass. We expect uh, the smaller load and uh, therefore, the load cell of uh, smaller capacity should be selected. However, in case of the weaker rock mass, one should go for the larger capacity load cells. Uh, the extent of the influence zone uh, because of the underground excavation will be more in uh, poor rock mass as compared to the good quality uh, rock mass which or may be the intact rock and therefore, for the installation of the borehole extensometer in the poor rock, we would need a deeper hole because if you recall what borehole extensometer does, it gives us the idea about the extent of the loosened rock mass. So, in case if uh, there is the poor quality rock mass, there is going to be larger extent of the influence zone or the loosened rock mass. So, the deeper hole will be needed for borehole extensometer in poor rock. Coming to the water condition, this is also one of the deciding factor about the specification of the instruments. So, if uh, the installation site has uh, severe water problems uh, and it is uh, likely that the instruments will remain submerged in water. Uh, strain gauge type of uh, the electrical instrument, these should not be used. It is advised to use uh, LVDT or vibrating wire type of uh, instruments. 
at the location where water is just dripping and the site is accessible, mechanical type of the instrument uh, may be installed uh, if uh, you have the short term monitoring to be done. Coming to the number of sensors which should be installed, so these should be decided on the basis of uh, geology, strength of rock mass, stress condition and the size of opening. When we say stress condition, so there we need to see whether it is a, a uniaxial, biaxial or true triaxial type of the state of stress in the field. A deep borehole extensometer with 5 to 8 points uh, is necessary around a cavern where 3 to 5 points may be sufficient in a tunnel of average size. Uh, these weaker rocks are affected to a greater distance around uh, an underground opening and hence uh, the deep borehole extensometer with 5 to 8 points uh, may be necessary uh, even for uh, 10 meter diameter uh, tunnel through weak rocks. Now, in case of the multi point borehole extensometer that is MPBX. Uh, it is advisable to keep one sensor each below and above the discontinuity which may be the shear zone, fault zone, fault, joint or the contact of two litho units. If the total number of sensors are more than 50 at any particular location, it is advisable to go for the sophisticated centralized data logging system which should have the facility of uh, storing and plotting the data. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to handle such huge data. If the number of sensors are small, then maybe direct reading with a readout unit through a junction box uh, will serve the purpose. The choice uh, between the data logging system and the direct reading system also depends upon the cost of the instrumentation program and of course, the purpose of the instrumentation. What all are the various stages of uh, any instrumentation program? Basically, this tunnel support instrumentation is an engineering operation and it should be designed like any other engineering operation that is uh, uh, it should have uh, the clearly defined objective and then what should be the scheme of the instrumentation. All these things should be prepared uh, with that purpose in view. An instrumentation program should not be just a set of instruments uh, which are installed uh, with the hope that uh, something interesting might show up. But then it is much more than this particular thing. One needs to keep that in mind that this is an engineering operation like any other engineering operation where you need so many aspects to keep in mind. There are basically three main stages. One is the planning, design and fabrication of instruments then the installation and observation and then whatever data that you obtain from these observations, the analysis of that. So, the instrumentation scheme, it cannot be planned to serve one or more than one uh, specific uh, purposes. The design of uh, different instrumentation, it comes uh, as a next step. So, without sacrificing the reliability, the designer must try to make sure that the instruments have the following qualities that is these should be easy to handle, economic, should be suitable to the site conditions and uh, they use appropriate technology and they have the high survival rate because uh, this instrumentation will go on maybe for few years. So, this is very very important aspect that is high survival rate. The installation of the instruments is a very important phase in any instrumentation scheme. 
the best system may be useless if you do not install it properly. So, the following precautions should be kept in mind while taking the observations. Uh, the observation should be taken before and after the blasting. Instruments should be installed close to the face. Then regular observation should be continued till the purpose of the instrumentation is over even after the construction. Then the proper checking of instruments and its readout unit etc. is extremely important at all these stages. Checking of backfill before the installation of load cells and the contact pressure cells is important. Then uh, you should always go with mean of 3 observation which are recorded every time. So, whenever you are going to take the observation, you take the 3 observation and record the mean of these 3. Coming to the data analysis. Uh, any instrumentation scheme is meant for some specific purpose. So, during the data analysis, we should keep that in mind that the analysis should serve all these purposes. Some of the important purposes can be that to provide the guidelines for the selection of tunnel support capacity or to ensure the tunnel closure should not exceed uh, the desired levels that is uh, the tunnel closure should always be less than 1 percent of the tunnel diameter in non squeezing and it can be more than 1 percent in uh, the squeezing ground conditions. Then uh, other purpose is uh, to investigate if the major discontinuity is stable or not and to decide on uh, the time to provide the concrete lining. What about the installation time? So, we have discussed about the stand up time and I mentioned to you that the installation of the support system should not be too late or too early. Uh, but then here we are talking about the installation time of the instruments. So, with the underground instrumentation work, various operations are there such as uh, the drilling, blasting, then mucking operation, then the installation of the support system. Therefore, before starting the installation of the instrument, a complete methodology should be decided and accordingly the work that can be done outside should be completed first. This will not only reduce the underground working time, but it will also improve the quality of the instrumentation program. Uh, since it is our uh, psychology that uh, we get really tired after working for some time in the similar environment. And if one person starts getting uh, tired, then the work will not be done to that serious extent and the ultimate suffering will be to the quality of the instrumentation. So, therefore, this should be kept in mind the, what I mean is the persons who are involved in the installation of the instrumentation we should be careful as far as their physical and mental conditions are concerned while working. So, these are uh, some of the references which have been followed uh, for the preparation of uh, this particular lecture. So, this finishes our discussion on instrumentation and monitoring of the tunnels. So, in this one we discussed uh, about the various instruments to measure the deformation or movement of the rock mass and uh, we also dis uh, discussed about the uh, instruments which are used to measure the loads on the support system or pressure on the support system along with the, some discussion on strain gauges and uh, piezometers. 
So, in the next class, uh, we will learn about uh, some of the case studies where the concepts that we have learned till now were used and in some cases the failure was there and in few cases because of this instrumentation and proper monitoring, we could save that uh, particular uh, underground excavation from failure. Thank you very much.